This video is sponsored by Galaxy Lamps. One thing I've always thought was cool was when people decorated their rooms with those hanging LED lights to really set the vibe, but imagine this. Take that concept a step further by projecting a night sky into your room. This is what the Galaxy Projector is all about. If you want to add a super surreal aesthetic to your space, this is exactly the kind of lighting that you need. It transforms any room into a planetarium to give this fascinating vibe. The projector is activated with a simple click of a button and it also has a smart device for easy use. You just download the app for the Galaxy Projector on your phone, and you can change a bunch of different features like the RGB colors, brightness, rotation speed, on-off timers, and many more customizable settings. It even integrates with voice devices like Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, so you can control the projector by just saying a few words. And in addition to all of that, it's super energy efficient, so you can take full advantage of the Galaxy Projector without worrying about your electricity bill putting a dent in your wallet. This is genuinely something I didn't fully appreciate until I used it for the first time, and I was completely in awe of it. The appeal of this is truly timeless. Get your Galaxy Projector by clicking the link below. Use the discount code SCAREDTHEATER to get 15% off. Now, let's dive into this video. I cheated on Axel. You were so cruel and so vicious. And I got caught. I, I just don't get how you- how do you live with yourself? I was trying to cheat on him. You never showed me the messages? You never admitted what happened? With two different guys at the same time. <laughs> it's not I will never live this down. Sorry, These so were disgusting. complex lies. Whether you find what I just showed you is shocking, amusing, or funny, I'm sure you're definitely confused. On this platform, we have seen many people share deeply personal aspects of their lives with the public. This often includes the ugly moments. The moment we're witnessing here is one of the many moments that resulted from the mental breakdown that was the result of a clearly not so great relationship. So let's take a look at exactly how we got to this moment. Not a Buddhist. Um... You have likely never heard of this channel before, but it's been around for a long time now. Abala Ciel, I think that's how you pronounce that, was started by a man named Eisel a decade ago, and the progression we see from the beginning to this point is fascinating. Eisel's first videos were mainly centered around him talking about Buddhism as an ex Buddhist, as well as general religion and philosophy. One of the biggest shadows hanging over modern Buddhism is the idea that what is more ancient is more rational. Although he was born in Canada, it is clear that he has a great interest in language, which has brought him to many parts of the world, including Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and China. Needless to say, he lived a rather unique life. But like the main character of every story, he was hit with a significant tragedy that had a large impact on his life. On April 3rd, 2014, he uploaded a video titled, Goodbye My Daughter. My reason for creating this YouTube channel is that I have a daughter. And I have a daughter that I will never get to see again. Don't worry, she's not dead. The way he opens this really makes it seem like she is, but no. This is tragic, but not that tragic. In the video, he talks about how 10 months after his daughter was born, his wife left him, taking the daughter and most of their money. He speaks a lot about the struggle he is going through, and although he doesn't portray his ex-wife in the best light given the situation, he does seem to be genuinely empathetic toward her, which isn't something that I expected. As terrible as it is for me, I sympathize that she's made a very tough decision and chosen a very hard path in choosing to be a single mother. And I'm left to say that, in some sense, I support her decision, even if it has a devastating effect on my own life. Ultimately, he says that he's making videos on this channel in hopes that one day, his daughter sees them, so she can get to know about him and the type of person that he was. I'm creating these videos with the hope that one day, my daughter will have the opportunity to see them. One day, this will create an opportunity for her to know what I sounded like, what I looked like, what motivated me in life, what the reasons were for how I lived my life up to this point. To put it lightly, this statement aged very poorly. Eisel continues posting his regular content, 
eventually expanding into becoming an advocate for veganism. He tried to be pretty involved in the vegan community, making video responses to some well-known members of the community during that time period, like Freely, Durian Ryder, and the goats, Vegan Gains. During his journey, he moved to China in order to learn Chinese. While here, he uploaded a video called Yes, I Love My Daughter, where he explained that he was learning Chinese in part for his daughter, since his ex-wife and him were very serious about their daughter learning Chinese as a second language. In this video, we also learn a bit more about the ongoing legal battle going on between him and his ex-wife. We, we filed for divorce, but the paperwork and, and the actual trial and so on, the court proceedings are still uh, un, unfinished. The frustration is clearly getting to him as he becomes more vocal about the ways in which his ex-wife is purposefully making this difficult for him. Um, she basically stabbed me in the back. In order for her to prevent me from seeing my daughter, all she has to do is not respond to an email. And she's done that many times. Eisel was clearly going through a tough time, but to his credit, he seemed to be taking it fairly well. Suddenly, things started to look up for him when he introduced us to his new girlfriend, Melissa, in a video on June 1st, 2017. We are two people who both talk about the future, talk about our educational prospects and our job options. This would be our first look at her, and no one expected that seven years later, it would end up like this. What happened? No, you are not going to tell your life story, starting with your ex-boyfriend you were with before me, or how you lost your virginity. No. What happened? Eisel and Melissa met under unique circumstances. She was a fan of his videos, and one day, she sent him an email asking about the rap music that was used in some of his videos. This led to them talking, and very quickly, Melissa made the hasty decision to move all the way to China to be with him. As both of them mentioned, this was much of the displeasure of Melissa's parents. Like, okay, I'll say this. I think back when you were selling this to your parents, mm -hmm. when you were explaining to your parents, because your parents were just freaked out by you moving to China, period. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, you know, they were slightly freaked out by me in particular. To add to this unconventional situation, there was also a significant age gap, with Melissa being 24 years old and Eisel being 38 years old at this time, which was a controversial point for some people. Melissa's decision seemed rash, and at least from my perspective, there seemed to be points in which the gravity of this weighed on her a bit. In one of their videos, Melissa talks about this feeling of being in limbo. You have to keep in mind, Melissa just moved from the United States to China to be with what is basically a stranger she met online. I can see why that might feel isolating. You're separated from everyone you once knew in an unfamiliar area, and you can't communicate with anyone since you don't speak their language. The only person she could really interact with was Eisel. She was totally reliant on him. Yeah, and this is a time that a lot of people that I talk to, they say it'll be a great experience for me. Yeah. But it, it's also a little bit strange feeling like you're in limbo. Yeah. Feeling like this is not really going anywhere. <laughs> even though it is a good experience, even though I'm happy. Even though... What is it you think you're cut off from? Like for, for six months in China? the western world speaking english <laughs> uh an actual community like like i am i hope that we do move to canada I, I think that's generally the plan it seemed like Eisel and her weren't totally on the same level here well look see what's interesting is just before she said that she started talking about canada i was thinking the exact opposite nonetheless the relationship between them grew to be incredibly strong and melissa started appearing in almost every one of Eisel's videos for a long period of time Eisel even took her along with him when he went to visit his daughter, and Melissa seemed to genuinely care for her and become a big part of her life. Regardless of how this all may have initially seemed to their audience, I will say that Eisel and Melissa do seem to genuinely be in love with each other. I can't deny that. Melissa's potential life opportunities started to open up when, in December of 2017, her and Eisel did end up leaving China to return to the Western world. They had been together for about six months at this point. As their relationship progressed, the number of critical comments from viewers increased. As opposed to just ignoring these comments and continuing to live their life how they want, they put a decent bit of effort into responding to their criticism. On December 21st, 2018, they uploaded a video specifically talking about their age gap and how some people found it weird. At this point, Melissa was 26 years old and Eisel was 40 years old. An interesting comment that Eisel made was about how he did not see Melissa as intellectually equal to him. 
they are really uncomfortable with us admitting and talking about in an honest and down-to-earth way the intellectual inequality between us. Yeah. If you have two people of equal intelligence and a 14-year age gap, the older person is going to be vastly, vastly superior to the younger person. Yeah. And to be fair, Melissa clearly has no issue with this. I don't see it as a negative thing at all. Yeah. I see it only as a positive thing that you can be in this role of teaching me things. I mean. This is also when we get an interesting insight into Melissa's behavior. They both share an experience where Melissa had a meltdown over a relatively trivial incident. When we first got together within the first couple of months, you once really threw a tantrum over the, the dryer the clothes, you know, the clothes washing yeah, machine, the clothes true. dryer, that the dryer had damaged one of your yeah, t-shirts. <laughs> no, but she, she was furious. She was livid. She was freaking out over this t-shirt. If you had known me when I was 23, where you were screaming at me, and where I would have screamed back at you. This might seem like something that isn't too big of a deal, especially if it was just a one-off incident, but as you'll see, this is going to be a recurring theme. Around the same time, Izo uploaded a video titled, On Almost Breaking Up With My Girlfriend. This was one of the first videos I watched on this channel where the whole time I was thinking, this is really, really weird. Let's have a look. Okay, the concept for this video, if not the title, is why have I not broken up with Melissa, my girlfriend who's sitting right off, right off camera here, right? So already he's speaking about this topic that I don't think anyone even asked him about in the first place. And also, he's sitting here speaking about Melissa in this context while she's in the same room as him. And she's not in frame, like she typically is for his other videos, which makes me think that she's probably not all that comfortable with this. Here's what it is. The main redeeming quality Melissa has is that I never have the same fight twice with her. Sounds good, I guess, but the vibe continued to get weirder when he said this. It's gotta be learning from experience. Can I apply this to myself? I mean, <laughs> Most of the problems the relationship have come from Melissa's side. He continues to tell a story about how recently Melissa hacked his Facebook account to read his messages out of some sort of jealous rage. Apparently, all she found were just messages saying positive things about her. For me, as 100% grounds to break up with you. Now, don't get me wrong here. I think hacking into your partner's social media to read their messages is psychotic. I'm not disputing that. What I think is weird is that Eisel is having this conversation and posting it to his audience on YouTube. There's obviously some problems in their relationship, and it's completely inappropriate to just air out all the shitty things each other do on social media. These kinds of things should be reserved for private conversations. This video almost feels like some kind of punishment for Melissa. About six months later, Eisel posted a similar video called Breaking Up With My Girlfriend Repeatedly. It's the insecurity of you leaving me and me never finding somebody that I love as much as you, you know? I had a situation with Melissa a couple of months ago, and she really hurt me. You know, I was trembling for, I think, three hours. Over the course of more than two years, this relationship has really damaged me. It has really broken me down. It seems this relationship has been taking a serious toll on his mental health. With how many problems Melissa seems to cause for Eisel, you might be wondering why he doesn't just break up with her. The answer is, he's tried, I guess. My experience of this relationship has been Melissa crossing the line, me dumping her, and then Melissa begging her way back into the relationship. Once again, I don't think it is healthy at all to be sharing these deeply personal aspects of your relationship online like this, especially when it literally seems to have no purpose other than to villainize one side of it. Now, at this point, while this is all very weird, I do feel for them both. If this was the extent of everything, then I wouldn't even be making a video about this at all. But oh my god, it gets deeper. As the uploads on this channel persisted, audience members continued posting comments voicing their concerns for Melissa. Eventually, in February of 2020, Eisel ended up disabling comments on all of his videos. He made a video talking about why he disabled them, giving us some spiel about how he did it for our benefit because he wanted to spend less time commenting on YouTube or something like that, but that just seems like bullshit to me. 
Despite this small adjustment, the uploads did not slow down. In fact, Melissa started developing a stronger presence of her own. The channel began uploading videos that exclusively featured Melissa, where we could really see her full personality shine. Despite comments being disabled, Eisel and Melissa were still fully aware of the critical views being held by their audience. At one point, Melissa took it upon herself to address these criticisms. In a clickbait video titled, My Girlfriend Dumped Me Because of You, Melissa talks about comments from people saying things like, Melissa is a manipulated hostage, and I'm very worried for Melissa. But Melissa stays very consistent. She defends her relationship with Eisel and maintains that she is very happy and deeply in love with him. For the record, I think this is true. Even to this day, I think Melissa is genuinely in love with Eisel, but that doesn't justify what we're about to witness. On April 14th, 2024, things officially went from weird to full-on psychotic. Eisel uploaded a video titled, My Girlfriend Cheated on Me, Years of Lies and Broken Promises. I'm going to read an email that I sent to people I really care about in January. Okay, so first of all, what the hell is this? This is already creepy as hell with the eerie shot of Melissa and Eisel's heavy breathing in the background. It reminds me of that one scene in Batman. Tell them your name. So it starts off with Melissa reading an email that Eisel made her send to her friends and family. I cheated on Eisel and I got caught. I was trying to cheat on him with two different guys at the same time. One guy is a big black guy. I'm not entirely sure why this detail is relevant, but I think we already knew that Eisel was kind of a weirdo. Eisel chimes in at time to say certain things, and it was almost comical when he said this. You didn't even watch, I mean, you stopped watching my YouTube videos. Let alone respond to them or whatever. Like, seriously? And this isn't the first time he brings that up. He does it again. It's a really strange sign of infidelity, but it's very telling when you stop watching your boyfriend's videos or stop watching your husband's videos. If any of you watching this are content creators, I'm sure you'll agree with me that unless you're a psycho, you do not care if your partner doesn't watch or enjoy your videos. It's not a big deal. In fact, this should be doubly so for Eisel, because if I'm being completely honest, most of his videos are insanely boring. They're super long, low effort videos of him just ranting about pointless stuff. And he posts a lot. He has over 2.6 thousand videos. I'd be shocked if Melissa did watch every one of them. And here's the real kicker. It obviously makes sense to be upset with your partner for cheating on you, but they were in an open relationship. You may wonder how it's possible to cheat on your boyfriend when you're in an open relationship. <laughs> a, a polyamorous relationship. I just yeah. yeah. Just not being open and not being honest means that you're cheating. I'm not saying this totally dismisses Melissa from any wrongdoing. Clearly there was some sort of agreement they had that they would keep each other in the loop with the people they were seeing, and Melissa obviously violated this. But dude, this is such a bizarre overreaction. The rest of the video features Eisel berating Melissa while she expresses extreme remorse for her actions. In the next video Eisel uploaded, he starts off by asking Melissa personal questions that seem to have no purpose other than to shame her. Let me ask you something, Melissa. How many orgasms do you think you've had today? The reason for the second video is because Eisel just discovered some more details that Melissa was hiding in the first video. He initially thought she was just planning on meeting with other guys, but apparently a little more than that happened. You masturbated on camera for another man. No evasion, no going back to no justification. I'm not making what happened? Eisel's insecurities start to come out in full force with some of the comments he makes. Okay, there is, oh, I'm sure the audience will remember there was the large black guy who's a bodybuilder. You've added that off camera that he's not that large. <laughs> That's topic for another video. For this dude. Yes. Who is smaller than me. Yes. Uglier than me. Yes. He actually has a physical disability. He has a malformed penis, you're telling me. Yes. Please describe his penis for the audience. Like, <laughs> I hate to laugh at this, but come on. It's just... It's so absurd. And near the end of the video, Eisel starts lashing out at Melissa, saying a bunch of things to make her feel bad. You've ruined my life for seven years. You've ruined my life as an author. 
you've ruined what I can do in terms of education, in terms of career, I sacrificed everything for you. You've ruined my YouTube channel. And none of these things are true, by the way. Eisel's completely delusional. Melissa literally left the United States to come to him in China, and he's saying that he made sacrifices? But I think one of the worst things Eisel said was this. When you think of the most beautiful women who tried to sleep with me, and how you ruined that for me. I, I knew a woman who was beautiful, she was a white woman who taught herself Chinese, and ancient Latin and Greek. She was beautiful and brilliant. I thought this comment was absolutely evil. It might not seem like much at first glance, but remember in a previous video where Melissa was crying about one of her insecurities being that Eisel meet a woman that is smarter and knows a bunch of languages like him? You know, you're yeah. basically on the cusp of leaving me. So like, if somebody mm. more beautiful, more studies Chinese, like has been to Laos, has been to, you know, China, yeah, hell yeah, you're gonna jump off and get on somebody else's ship. This comment is very clearly an attempt to weaponize that insecurity. It's still not over yet. In Eisel's next video, Abuse of Girlfriend, when the woman sexually traumatizes the man, Eisel forces Melissa to talk about one of the times in which she was abusive toward him. If this is a relationship in which the female partner abuses the male, that that is the problem, not vice versa. I have said and done just terrible things that have denigrated Eisel sexually and traumatized him sexually. I feel like Eisel is probably feeling some sense of frustration since for years he's been accused of being an abuser while he clearly sees himself as more of a victim. So this video seems to be a way to show everyone that he is the victim. Ironically, in doing this, he only makes himself appear 10 times worse than he did before. In Eisel's next video, he continues to exhibit thriller movie levels of psycho behavior when he records Melissa leaving this voice message to one of the guys she had an affair with. It has ruined my life and it ruined my relationship with the man of my dreams, the love of my life. My life is over. I, I really think my only option is killing myself. My only option is, is dead. The fact that I sent you nude photos and videos of myself without telling Eisel is the worst thing I have done in my life. I was a good person before I knew you. My affair with you ruined my life. I ruined my own life for the you. The recording has reached the maximum length. To replay your message, press the The last video Eisel uploaded on this day was called Cheating Girlfriend Apologizes to Ask Me to Take Her Back, Give Her Another Chance. Do you feel, at one stage of the relationship, that I loved you? This follows the same theme as before, with Eisel going off about how she ruined everything. You've really ruined my life. <laughs> and you have done it in a way that is permanently devastating to my career and reputation. Think I'm going to be a lawyer now, Melissa? What do you think I'm going to do with the rest of my life? Think I'm going to work the stock market? What do you think? What do you think about my bright future? How about as an author? How about as a leader in the vegan movement? To be honest, I have no idea what the hell Eisel's talking about here. Being a lawyer, working the stock market, he wasn't planning on doing these things in the first place. And some girl cheating on you doesn't affect anything. What's he talking about? Plenty of people have been cheated on before. I think the logic is that he finds this so humiliating that it ruins his reputation or something like that. But the thing is, he did this to himself. He's the one posting these psychotic videos airing all this shit out. He talks about his reputation. What reputation? Hardly anyone even watches his videos. The only reason I even know about this is because of these strings of absolutely deranged videos he's posted. If it weren't for this, I wouldn't even know who this guy is. It's like that meme with the kid holding the boot up to his head. It's so dramatic. As of finishing up the script, these weird hostage style videos have stopped and the rest have been near daily uploads from Melissa talking about weird topics that obviously seem to be influenced by Eisel to make her look bad. I don't know what the future holds for Melissa and Eisel, but unfortunately, they're probably going to stay together through this somehow. Now, I want to make a few things clear here. In my opinion, what Eisel is doing here definitely qualifies as psychological abuse. With that in mind, I don't think Melissa is all rainbows and sunshine either. From the anecdotal things I've heard through all these videos, 
She does seem to be, at the very least, an incredibly difficult person to deal with, and at the most, capable of insane emotional damage. That said, what Aizel is doing here is clearly much worse. I think the most depressing part about this is that, a decade ago, Aizel didn't seem to be this kind of person. He was going through a difficult time in his life when his wife left him and took his kid, but he seems so optimistic and hopeful. In one of his first videos, he talked about this channel being a sort of legacy he could leave behind for his daughter. After everything we've just seen, I feel sorry for his daughter. Her father has exhibited some truly disgraceful behavior that she absolutely should not look up to. Aizel, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but there's a good chance you might, since personally, I think you might be a narcissist. So, if you are watching this, you need to get help, dude. This is not normal. I think both you and Melissa are mentally ill, and only a professional is capable of unwrapping whatever the hell all of this is. But knowing what I know about you, self-awareness is the last thing I would expect. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip side.